Good afternoon, my name is John O'Dee from Crossbond and today I'm going to take you through the starting up of an endoflip system and how to connect the catheter and to check it out. The endoflip catheter comes in two parts, there is a pre-filled syringe and the catheter itself. The catheter itself uh, comprises of a series of electrodes which allow cross-sectional area to be measured and the first thing you want to do is to remove the protective sleeve from the catheter. Next you want to take the cap off the syringe and connect it to the lower connector on the catheter like so. The machine then is switched on. It's connected via this power brick to the wall and it's important that you have nothing connected to the machine when you are powering it up. And indeed, the first message you will see when the, the, the machine powers up is that nothing should be connected. It takes approximately 15 to 20 seconds to power up. And so this is the warning I mentioned here about not having anything connected. If it continue, and you will see here that the syringe plunger moves back and then homes back to the position that should always match the, the syringe that you are putting in. So next what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the connector and then we are going to uh, connect up the syringe. So the syringe slots in here and here in two places. You turn this lever here and slide this door over the syringe. Once you have the catheter in place, you're, you'll notice that you're asked a question, do you wish to archive the previous patient data and continue or delete the previous patient data and continue? And essentially the machine, for HIPAA reasons, only stores the most recent patient's data on the machine. If you wish to archive it, you can place a USB key here and hit archive and continue. In this instance, we'll just delete and continue. We are then asked for the patient ID. So for instance, in this case, we'll type in patient1, say PT1, and hit continue. You then get a message that says new catheter detected prepare for a pre-use check, ensure the protective sheath is removed, which we've just done, and then place the balloon in the test cylinder provided. Now there are two types of cylinder, there's this disposable version here, or more recently we have this standalone metal version which comes with your machine. Now essentially the purpose of this procedure is twofold. What we want to do is we want to check out that all the electrodes are measuring correctly and secondly we want to purge any air that is in the line in the catheter. So we place the catheter like so and hit purge catheter. So what this is doing is it's filling the catheter line with saline and essentially displacing the air in the catheter with saline so that the balloon is always filled with saline. This is a diluted saline solution here. This is not the standard saline within the hospital and you should never just put standard saline in there. So what's happening is the catheter is filling up the system is then going to withdraw saline and then re-infuse it into the balloon. And what we expect to see then is approximately 14 millimeters in diameter being measured at each electrode. So what's happening right now is the system is withdrawing the fluid and it's going to pump it back in. And we should see approximately 14 millimeters on, 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 on every catheter point.
Now sometimes you may see large variations in diameter while there's little fluid in the balloon. It's important that the full balloon has fluid in it since the way the system works the outermost electrodes essentially drive a signal into the balloon and then the remaining electrodes read. So here we're getting a good degree of comfort we can see that all the electrodes are reading around 14 millimeters. So this is not a calibration procedure this is actually just essentially a pre-use checkout to give you comfort that the measurement that you're, you're about to take is, 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 is accurate. Now straight after this, what's going to happen next is that the, the system is going to zero the pressure transducer that sits within the balloon itself. There's one solid state pressure transducer and that's for, used for measuring how much you are inflating the balloon by, what sort of pressure you're inflating the balloon by. So it says the catheter is now ready for use. Hit continue and essentially you're all good to go. The catheter, as I say, is, 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 comes pre-calibrated so this checkout procedure is purely that, a checkout procedure. And this is ready now for deployment uh, down through the esophagus or, or through the nose. If you're deploying via the esophagus, it can be done alongside an endoscope, and that's typically how it's done. Though equally, in, in many cases, the, the catheter is deployed without the use of an endoscope and deployed down either over a laryngeal blade in intraoperative situations um, or through the nose like any uh, manometry catheter, for example. Now that the machine is set up, uh, a couple of points. I always zero the system right before placing the catheter into the patient. So you can hit pressure zero should you wish. And it will inflate one to two milliliters into the balloon as part of that process. Always hold the catheter horizontal if you're doing a pressure zero, just so that you don't have the rho GH or the, the, the weight of the saline bearing down on the pressure sensor. The system is very simple to use. You want to inflate to the desired volume. Typically we inflate to 30 ml when we're doing a lap band for instance or measuring the GEJ compliance. So we just hit inflate and the system will proceed to inflate 30 milliliters into the balloon. And if you look here, you will see the amount of fluid in the balloon. And here you have the amount of fluid in the syringe. The default is 30 milliliters. You can infuse up to 50 milliliters. And I will show how that's done in a minute. 